Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. I rise to speak on the matter of importance, and I want to begin by um, saying thank you to the Victorians, all Victorians who have um, adhered to the rules that we need to put in place to actually make sure we got through this pandemic situation. I want to thank the emergency workers. I want to thank the essential workers. I want to thank the families that stayed home. I also want to thank the truck drivers and the logistics operators who, when we saw demand outstrip supply, when people were scared and panicking and wanting to get supplies into their home because they weren't sure what the future was bringing, the truck drivers and the logistic operators went over and above to reassure the community that we would all be uh, able to get the things we needed like meat, milk and toilet paper. And I especially want to focus on the nurses, the doctors and the hospital administrators who, while we all went home and hid, they went out every single day getting prepared for what was predicted to be an absolute catastrophe. So my colleagues of um, the past went to work whilst they saw images of mass graves being built in countries like the UK, America and Italy. And let me tell you, it was unnerving. I had many conversations with my nurse friends and my doctor friends who were actually quite concerned. One girlfriend worked in aged care in an um, ACAS assessment team and uh, she was uh, shut, that team was shut down and she was sent into the um, acute area with the provision of saying, you will need to talk to the uh, families of older people who we will not have ventilators for. Now, she was quite confronted by that and thought, I don't know if I'm ready for it. Another girlfriend who works in theatre said to me, I'm actually really scared. I mean, can we actually get corona? At this point in time, we did not know what this virus was like. We didn't know what it was capable of. It was a very frightening experience. So cast your minds back to that time, we can all remember it, and think about the nurses and the doctors who put themselves in front of that, uh, in front of that war. And remember at the time, nurses and doctors are very skilled. You know, I wore masks in hospitals, in theatre for years. I understand how to wear a mask, but we were hearing that masks Mask wouldn't protect us and we shouldn't be wearing masks. Well, I was pretty impressed when the World Health Organization eventually came out and said, you know what, masks actually do work. Because I see the studies that say 60% effective rate. Well, that's if you don't wear them properly. But if you don't wash your hands properly, that also doesn't work. So here we are now in a situation when we have flattened the curve. Thank you, Victorians. Thank you to the hospital staff. We have the ventilators. Warrnambool Base Hospital set up two environments. One they called the dirty environment where the COVID cases would go and one where the normal ventilator patients, as we've always had, would go. They were ready and they are ready because we will have outbreaks, but we've flattened the curve and we can take on what we've got in front of us. We know that social distancing works. You know I can't spit further than a metre and a half. You know, it doesn't, it, but if I'm talking to you now, yes, spittle will actually land a metre away from me and it will infect you if it goes into your mucosal linings around your nose, your mouth or your eyes. That's just how it works. So stay away from people. But we don't know whether we still need four metres square and plenty of jurisdictions have actually changed that. But that's for the scientists to work through, but not necessarily for us as Victorians to stay as closed down as we are when we have achieved, or haven't we? Has the government done the job? Are they prepared? If so, why is Victoria staying so far away from the, um, the restrictions that we could ease that other states are easing? I know today we have 21 cases, but let's remember 15 of those have returned from overseas. So we'd expect that they should be isolated and are, and it's actually seven. So we have a manageable number and that will continue. We have no vaccine. We have to learn to live with the virus. We've never had a corona vaccine before. There are corona diseases, family of corona diseases, so we may not get a, virus, a, a vaccine. Right, so what have we got now? We've got a, a community who know how to wash their hands. We can use masks for the immunocompromised. We can actually make sure we manufacture more ourselves. Oh, there's a thought. Let's invest in manufacturing. And that's what we've done. Bring back, <laughs> bring back Western Victoria. We've got the old Fletcher Jones, the old Woolen Mill. There's plenty of manufacturing still in Western Victoria. That's what the dairy industry is very impressed with, uh, proud of the fact that we manufacture in the regions. So we've got a billion dollar uh, on the table plan. We're not saying for election promises. We're saying because we're here to work with government to bring about change together. 
We are busy trying to help Victoria get back on track and back into business. But here's a government who is not focused on getting back into business. In fact, they're so not focused on getting back into business, they're more focused on themselves. And let me show you, tell you why. There was a $10,000 grant called... Um, a business support fund, which should do exactly that, support businesses, not wrap businesses up in so much red tape than, and bureaucracy that many of the businesses who've contacted me have been rejected and don't know why. Can't get any answers out of the department. It's an absolute debacle of a system that they are navigating their way through and calling me going, we just can't, we just can't figure it out. I have spent an, an enormous amount of time trying to get in touch with the former former small business uh, minister, Adam Somurek. And guess what? No wonder I had no success. He wasn't focused on small business. He wasn't intent on getting back to me. He was too busy trying to shore up his power base. As we saw two or three days ago on 60 Minutes, some absolutely amazing footage of disgraceful corruption, corruption in the state of Victoria like I would never have believed we would see. That's the sort of thing you would see in the old Eastern Bloc country concepts. This is not something you would see in Australia. It is very shameful. So instead of the minister for former, the former minister for small business helping our community, what was he doing? Helping himself. Disgusting. But it doesn't end there. We also have the pubs from Victoria. I've got pubs in my area. Peter Reid, just yesterday from the Yambuck Inn, desperate, saying to me, I can't get this business um, support fund. Can you help me? I don't know what's going on. Well, you know, the pubs need to get back on track. They need to get people back into them and the communities need it. But where has the liquor licensing minister been? The former liquor licensing minister as of yesterday, has she been talking to the pubs? Has she been talking to the industry? Has she been considering the two metre square concept that I outlined before could actually be quite a reasonable scientific um, approach, which has seen other jurisdictions Im uh, implement? No, no. She was busy. She was also busy shoring up her power base. And don't tell me that Daniel Andrews doesn't know anything about it. Ten years he's been in the party, in charge, and the fish does rot from the head. So absolutely, this rotten government is corrupt to the core, and the people of Victoria who are out there running their businesses, locked up in their houses for weeks on end, educating their children, putting really... You know, when I rang business after business after business at the start of this... It was like we were in a war. They were saying, we're all in this together. We'll get through this. We're all going to take a hit. Well, has the Labor government been having that approach? No. Nope. What have they been doing? Shoring up their power base. Shoring up their ability, particularly Daniel Andrews, to stay in power. It's all about a focus on power, not the people. The people who elected us to stay in here and represent them. But no, he even... You know, wouldn't let the parliament sit. No scrutiny around um, the parliamentary estimates and um, accounts inquiry. You know, nothing. It was so evident. If you actually, I hope Victorians, I hope Victorians are listening closely. I hope they're listening to the lack of scrutiny. You know, just today here in the lower house and yesterday, you know, we tried to put a motion forward to get the ombudsman uh, refer, sorry, the um, the situation to IBAC blocked. Blocked to the Ombudsman, sorry, thank you. Blocked twice. Thank God the Upper House have passed it this afternoon. Because why would you be afraid of scrutiny? If there's nothing to be frightened of, if there's nothing happening, there's a lot of video footage, so clearly something is happening. There's absolutely no way the Victorian community can now believe anything other than this government is rotten, rotten to the core. So I, I do, I feel like I should be doing a grievance because it's the 127,000 people who have lost their jobs that I feel sorry for. It's those businesses that are calling me who not only have no income, basically lost their jobs, but have their staff who go to the local school, who actually employ the teacher, who actually, it goes on, it goes on. And these guys, these communities are who I feel sorry for. I am 
seriously worried about businesses in regional Victoria over the next 18 months. I don't think we've seen anything yet. So I urge Daniel Andrews to get his head back out of his party rubbish and get on with looking after the Victorians who elected him, because if he doesn't, we sure as hell will. We've got a back-to-business plan. We will invest in manufacturing. We will get jobs back on target. We care.